So today we'll be taking a look at some rumored programming changes for WWE, EC3's amazing comments, and Liv Morgan's surprising AEW teaser. Let's start things off with the rumored program changes for WWE. WWE has been rated PG for a long time now. Everyone knows just how edgy and controversial their product was in the late 90s and early 2000s. But then they went through this transition where they realized that they needed the younger fans as well. So the product became more family oriented and it's been that way all the way until current day. But there's been times over the years where WWE would make a little push to bring back some edgy content. But then it sort of fizzled out after a while and they stepped away from it again. So it's been a real on and off sort of thing over the years. But apparently, it's back on now. Reports claim that WWE is allegedly not so pleased with their 18-49 to 49 demographic, so they plan to bring some more edgy content and profanity to help spike that age group's interest again. The reports claim that this will only apply to Raw and NXT. The product changes won't apply to SmackDown because Fox Network doesn't really want to play around when it comes to that. They're one of the top tier networks and they have high professional standards, so they're not going to tolerate that. But Raw and NXT are on smaller networks, so there's more wiggle room there to push the envelope. We've seen some examples of these changes in recent weeks, with the inclusion of the S-word being sprinkled into dialogue. Braun used it on NXT and Seth Rollins also dropped it on Raw in an interview, so it's a good sign that what this report is saying could be true, but hopefully the changes they're planning to do goes beyond just profanity. Viewers aren't going to come running back just because you're cursing up a storm now. There's no substance there, especially not enough to convince a viewer who left to tune back into WWE. When it really comes down to basically storylines, that's the deciding factor. That's what catches people's attention and gets them invested in a match and in a product. The report didn't mention any changes being made to storylines, but hopefully it's included in all of these changes because that's the important factor here. If they give more storylines the proper care and time like they do with Roman's entire arc, that's going to be a real game changer there. If you have a few Roman Reigns like high quality stories going on, now people have a reason to tune in and get invested. We were recently talking about this topic last week because Becky Lynch said in an interview that fans remember stories more than anything else, and it's true. So if their program changes also include better quality storylines, storylines that actually feel like they have some sort of direction, that's going to go a long way in bringing some fans back as well. But be on the lookout for potentially more profanity and edgier content on the two shows of Raw and NXT. It's the match that no one wants to remember and the match no one wishes ever took place to begin with, and that's of course the horrific night of Goldberg vs The Fiend. It's hard to get into this match because where do you really start? The Fiend had already encountered one massive screw up just a few months prior to the Goldberg match with the entire Hell in a Cell finish. WWE patched up that mistake by putting the Universal title on The Fiend, and even gave him a custom championship, which is extremely rare. So everyone thought they finally got it, they understood how special this character was quickly becoming. Well, turns out they didn't know how special he was, and quite frankly didn't care either. The Fiend vs Goldberg for the Universal title took place in early 2020. And there was initially some fear that Goldberg would take the title, but logical thinking fans thought, no, The Fiend is going to get the big win over Goldberg to fully establish himself as the next big thing. And that wasn't the case. When given the decision to keep a hot new character rolling or go with a superstar of the past, WWE decided to go with the past, which is still one of the all-time worst match outcomes in history. Goldberg defeats the undefeated Fiend and took the Universal title to WrestleMania. WWE didn't see the Fiend vs Roman Reigns as a WrestleMania worthy match, but they somehow saw Goldberg vs Roman Reigns as this big dream match. So that's why the decision was made to give Goldberg the title. 
Of course, WWE's Spear vs. Spear dream match plans would end up blowing in their face after the pandemic hit and Roman pulled out of WrestleMania. So they had Goldberg vs. Braun Strowman for the Universal title at WrestleMania instead. The Fiend would stick around for several months after that Goldberg match, but a lot of fans look back now and still view that match as basically being the end. EC3 recently spoke with Wrestling Inc. and really opened up about how that match made him feel. He had this to say, I remember I would call this the day wrestling died for me. I wasn't even there when he, the fiend, Bray Wyatt, just got beat by Goldberg. I've watched this man work so hard and be so unique and be so creative and do so many different things and take it upon himself developing something so special to have it just thrown away by someone's decision. And it couldn't have been said any better. EC3 nailed every single main point there. Everything that Bray Wyatt established and created with this new hot character was thrown away in a moment's notice, just because someone wanted to see Goldberg vs. Roman. It really doesn't make any sense, and looking back at it, it obviously was such a negative moment for the character. They really just threw the road spikes on what Bray Wyatt had rolling, and it was just devastating. And like we even see here with EC3, it was even spirit crushing for other wrestlers who were just watching it from afar. EC3 also recently noted on Twitter that he expects Bray to transcend into his final and most powerful form next time we see him. And that's what fans expect to see as well. We're expecting to see another big evolution and transition for his character. There's only a few weeks left in his non-compete clause, so the excitement will continue to build here in the following weeks. It's a weird headline to see for sure, but Liv Morgan recently had a tongue-in-cheek AEW tease. This all started after a fan pointed out that Liv Morgan and Kevin Owens have always been drafted together and end up on the same brand after every single WWE draft. Liv Morgan responded on Twitter by tweeting at Kevin Owens that they're destined to do this forever. And a lot of fans thought it was a bit funny because there's some fan-created buzz and speculation out there that Kevin Owens' next roster move will most likely be to AEW. So if they're destined to do this forever, does that mean Liv Morgan will join Kevin Owens in AEW one day? Well, to stir the pot and keep the conversation going, AEW Women's Champion Britt Baker responded to Liv Morgan's tweet and said, Interesting, with a thinking face emoji. And Liv Morgan responded by tweeting, It is, isn't it? Of course, what Britt and Liv are referring there is the idea of Liv following Kevin to AEW. As expected, the exchange of words between both AEW and WWE stars really got the fans talking. But Liv does seem to be in a good spot right now. She's back on Raw. She has WWE's attention at the moment. But if they forget about her again down the line... Maybe Liv would follow behind Kevin Owens to AEW and even reunite with Ruby Soho as well. So we will see how that plays out in the future. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.